bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Welcome to the Hour of Deliverance. I'm Reverend Dr. K.E. Holmes, and I have something exciting I want to share with you today. I hope it excites you half as much as it excites me, and that is making a mark from the earth in the heavenlies. Now, if you tuned in to this, no matter what day it is, it is not an accident. You are one of those that makes a mark in the earth and also in the heavenlies. And that's whether you know you're doing it or whether you're not. So call somebody, email somebody, text somebody, and tell them to tune in today. Tune in right now. We're going to look at Moses. We're going to look at uh, Mordecai. We're going to look at, uh, who else did I put on my sleeve? Moses, Mordecai, and uh, somebody else. Ah, Job, how could I forget? I'll give you a short testimony. Job's a, a book that I, I read the scriptures through ever since 1968. I read the scriptures through every year and actually every, every quarter from Genesis to Revelation. And um, God had said something to me, 68, 69, uh, that frightened me, it, but it was out of the book of Job, and I had only ever heard people preach about Job losing his children, and I wasn't married in 68, I didn't get married until 1974, and didn't start having children until 76, which is something, if you've heard me tell the testimony that God had spoken to me in 68, 69, telling me two years after you're married, you're going to have a son, and then he told me all about this son. But in those days, um, there was a lot of scary preaching. Uh, and there might still be today. And, and there's a lot of scary things about God and about heaven and about earth. So it's not f false or wrong. But it made me afraid of anything in the book of Job. Uh, because I didn't want to go through what Job went through. I saw people that lost loved ones and... And I saw how my family was when they lost loved ones. I couldn't imagine, imagine at the age that I was in 68, 69, losing a child. And I saw the anguish. And when I read the book of Job, oh my goodness, I looked at his wife and what she said to him. And, and I don't know why that part stood out to me more than the illness because what I went through in my life had more to do with the illness than it had to do with losing. Uh, but it made me afraid of the book of Job, and yet early on, early on in my salvation, God said some things to me about the book of Job. And then when I did try to share them, uh, it was assumed that uh, the wrong thing was assumed, I'll put it that way, by wonderful people of God, praying mothers and and prophetic people that walk in the prophetic and we didn't even put it that way back then we just called them prophets and people that you knew that were true and that you knew you could trust and I would tell them the things that God would say to me or the things that I was seeing and they'd have a different take on it and so now all these years later I do have the courage to share with you mostly because I want you to not be afraid when God has made you a person who is to make a mark in the earth and in the heavenlies. Now, some of you want to make a mark in the earth and depending on your personality, trade, or uh, different other things in your life, you're going to need to remember that God's word says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you in due time. I'm telling you, email somebody, text somebody, call them right now. And let them know that not only do you want to hear this, but they want to hear this too. We live in times where you need to make a difference. And you need to make a big difference. And yes, the butterfly effect is something and it's wonderful and it's huge. And it's part of what God has ordered in the earth through what we like to call Mother Nature. But nature has done some things. Nature has... has uh, judge some things. The word of God has is on the move and the saints of God, whether we recognize it or not, we have loosed some things on the earth 
And so has the wicked. And the scriptures tell you of all that. In the midst of all of that, and with all of that going on, and with all of that being the way that it is, you need to make a mark in the earth. And I'm holding myself back from pointing to you. I want to invite you. So let's let's look first at, at musicians. Now, many of you already know if you're musicians uh, or writers, songwriters, or even songsters, most of you know that God gave King David new chords that were not in the earth already. Uh, he gave him to, to uh, songs that he heard from heaven. Now, he got the credit for those of us who know about uh, having the credits for writing a song or producing a song or mixing a song. David has the credit for it, but they were sounds that he heard from heaven. God gave them to him. They were the sounds that he had his ears open so that the angels could, uh, he could hear the angels singing. And when I say angels, I'm, I'm using that term because I know most people um, call all the hosts of heaven angels. It, it's hard for me to do that since I know that angels is only a rank. And um, But for the purposes of what I want to get through today, if I say host, I'm talking about all of the created hosts that we like to call that group of angels, but do know that angels is a rank of the created hosts. But uh, they sing. Sometimes you can even sense them singing with us in our worship. They join us in worship. It's not just for the point of singing. They're so, they are sons of God, and they sing in the morning. They open the morning up with song. And um, the same way that the day opens the, the day up with light. And those are concepts that we know and we live with all the time, but we don't think of spiritually or we don't think of in the natural. Uh, how many of us think, uh, think about it, how that when God, under Levitical law, he told them to, to wash this way and do that way. And if, you, if you've contaminated yourself, uh, say for the dead, but in certain kind of ways, sometimes you wash in a basin, but then if it's the dead, not only do you wash with running water, but then you dry your hands in the sun. And uh, if you're a medical doctor, you might realize that's because the sun kills certain kinds of bacteria uh, that are going to be associated with when God says to do it that way. But if you're all tied up and tangled up as, what was the song that used to say, tied up, tangled up in Jesus, if you're all tied up and tangled up in, in um, tradition and the word, and I mean the word of God good and the word of God after a tradition, all you may know is that when you wash, you do it in running water. And then the next person knows that when you wash, then you let your hands just dry in the sun. And then someone else may have just completely missed that it was in the sun for the benefit of, of the sun killing the bacteria. And they think it's to dry and not to put it on a cloth. Uh, but we think up all kinds of things from the things that God said. So I'm saying all of that so that you will be right with me today. Right with me. Right with me today. When I talk about making a mark in the earth. Now I'm talking about Job. I'm going to uh, bring to you Moses and his song because it's sung in heaven. Just so that you know. And um, uh, Mordecai. And I, I'm torn as to where to start because this is so much fun for me. I think I'll start with Mordecai. In Esther 10.3. I want to stop and pray. And God have your way. Speak earth. From earth into the heavenlies. And back into the earth. And make manifest your name, your word, your life, your love. I went to go into the scripture on my phone. I have my iPad here, and there's a message of something going on. And that's part of making a mark in the, in the earth, that sometimes you stop for things and other times you don't. Sometimes you stop and you move heaven and earth, and sometimes you're not stopping move, moves heaven and earth. Remember when uh, Jesus got the notice that, Eli, Eli, pardon me, not Elijah. 
that uh, Mary Martha's brother, Lazarus, was sick. And he waited four days. And uh, most of us, we want people to come right away. Just like just now, when I saw this notice, I prayed right away. Sought the Lord right away. Speak healing and life, wholeness and health right away. Speak duck dexterity and cl clarity of mind to the doctors. And uh, uh, preciseness of, of ideas, precision and steadiness of hand for the surgeon. Yeah, sometimes we want to stop right away. Actually, the way we are, we always want to stop right away. But when you're making a mark in heaven and earth, sometimes it's not right away. Remember one ruler, um, his, his uh, s servant, I think, I want to say child, but I think it was his servant that was sick. And he's like, Jesus, you know, I'm not worthy for you to even come under my roof. But I tell you what, I know that your word will go and your word is going to do what you said. You know, he said, I, I, I say to my soldiers that are subordinate to me, I tell them what to do and they do it. And even those that hear the word far off, they don't hesitate to do it. He recognized the authority of Jesus Christ. I want you to recognize the authority that you have, that Jesus has given you, that you walk in. You're not taking his glory. And um, you have authority to walk in. So I'm going to go over here. Thank you, Lord, for letting me see that. I'm going to go over here to Esther 10.3. I think I'll go here in my my uh, iPad. Yeah, because it tells you that Mordecai made history. But it, and when you're so busy being religious, you think you're not worried about making history for man. And it also tells you that he made a difference for his people and in the kingdom of God. And I want us to know that you're to make a difference in the kingdom. He who wins souls is wise. But you can make a difference in business, and you ought to. You can make a difference in entrepreneurship, and you ought to. You can make a difference in philanthropy, and you ought to. And I name those things. You can make a difference in real estate, and you ought to. And uh, those are things that you want to do now. So most of us know the story of Esther. It's a short book. It's only 10 chapters. You want to stop and read it every now and then. We're living in times when you want to read um, the effect that you can have, not just the Esther story, but Mordecai or even Haman, so that you know who you are and how you are and how God will use you, even with the drama that is going on. So in Esther 10, and it's only, only three verses, but... King Ahaziah has laid a tribute upon the land and upon the isles of the sea. And you want to see why. You want to get up on the story and find out why. Now watch this. In all the acts of his power and his might. We're not talking about God. We're talking about a king. But a king that God set up. All the acts of his power and his might and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai. Whereunto the king advanced him. Are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Media and Persia? For Mordecai the Jew was next unto King Ahasuerus, great among the Jews, accepted of the multitude of his brethren, seeking the wealth of his people and speaking peace to all his seed. We're going to look. is what my answer is and Lord I say yes 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 Lord yes Lord 
Holmes I and Holmes in concert Friday October 20th at Hackman's Bible Bookstore over there in Whitehall Pennsylvania I want to see you there give me a hug I live on those hugs listen I and in concert and he's releasing a new album but so is Kimberly Holmes she's gonna be there singing Uni Lopez and I know she's always got some good music and Zuriel oh my goodness all people that you don't want to miss I don't want to miss you make sure you come now it's 6 30 to 8 30 make it a point to come make it a point to come with some money and spend some money at Hackman's bookstore at Bible bookstore and thank them for opening up to us so that's October 20th 6 30 Hackman's Bible bookstore in Whitehall PA I and Holmes in concert give me a hug when you get there I need to talk to those of you who are soul winners. Um, I'm a soul winner. I, I don't, if you're within a foot of me, I used to say two feet, and you don't know the Lord, I want you to know the Lord yesterday. <laughs> Not just today, right now, but already. And God has honored that with me. But at the same time, I want you to understand that while you know that everybody's not coming to the Lord, I certainly don't know that everybody I, I know is not coming to the Lord. I don't know anything like that. As far as I'm concerned, anybody that has anything to do with me is to know Jesus. But you do need to understand that everybody that you deal with, it's you're, you're not giving them a gospel message. Now, you're a living epistle. You're living a gospel message. They can look at you and read the word and know the word. And King Ahasuerus was one of those kind of people. He had some ideas, and he did whatever worship he felt was to worship, and he made sure other people were to follow him in worship because he knew that he was that kind of right, and he walked in his authority. But even with all of that, and I right now I'm going to call it drama, I want you to understand that when you make a mark in the earth, there's a whole lot of other things going on. Other people are living their lives. Sometimes you ought to remind yourself that there are billions of people on the planet, in the world, at the same time as you. At the same time, please know that you are so unique that you are one unique person out of 400 million other people born at the same time as you or in the same times as you. You are one in 400 million. That doesn't mean that you're lost in the pile. It means that you're unique. And you need to know your uniqueness. Now, some of you that I'm talking to today, you have birthed someone like that. And usually, it's a whole family that is like that. Uh, not just one in a family. And yes, uh, within a family like that, some are more prominent than others. When you look at King David, while he was the one anointed king, all the brothers were handsome. They were all uh, wonderful at war. Uh, they they were wonderful men, and he was from a line that was revered. Uh, I could make that a whole study, uh, David's line. But right now, we want to look at Ahasuerus. He's a king. God set him up, and he knew God set him up, and yet he did not worship God. Sometimes the mark that you make in the earth, even when you are the living letter, the living epistle, that someone can read and know God and know the glory of God, it doesn't bring them to him. But it does bring them into subjection to him in certain things. Now, in this case, Mordecai made his mark in the earth. And right now, we don't have the, the history books, the chronicle books of the kings of Media and Persia, but we know that it went down in history. We know that it went down in the history of the Medes and the Persians. And they were the mighty people of the day. They were the mighty people of the time. I remember back in the 60s uh, during the uh, Civil Rights Movement and um, we were busy learning history and I was just so very unsatisfied with the way that we learned history because I understood an expression that I say all the time nowadays, but that while it's cheese, it's history, it's Swiss cheese, it's got holes in it. This history has holes in it. There's stuff that's missing. 
and what's missing has to do with me. It pertains to me. Well, actually, it pertains to all of us because history is what we all live out. But you, you make your mark in the earth. And I want you to understand that even with uh, powerful other people and powerful other kings in the earth, that everybody knows who they are and everybody knows how they are, you, walking with God in the power that he's given you and in the authority that he's given you, in the righteousness that he's given you, make an impact in the earth and in the heavenlies. So I'm going to read it to you again. All the acts of his power and his might and, now which that's about Ahasuerus, but and the declaration of the greatness of Mordecai. You see, Ahasuerus was so impressed by God and God in Mordecai and Esther's God that he made sure that this was written down in history. Now, what, what, what about the heavenlies? God has it recorded as part of his word. You can make a mark in history while you're walking this earth and in the heavenlies. As I said, we don't have the history books of, of the Medes and the Persians right now. Archaeology, we dig it up and then we have to translate it and all that kind of stuff. But are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings? See, a higher echelon. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will. Not he might. He will exalt you in due time. Now, you don't want God to have to humble you. Every time you read that in the Word, it's usually at the last stage and you tore your britches and you're, you're going to get a, a judgment or a severe whipping that you won't know the difference between final judgment and that whipping, living it out. But when that's when God has to humble you. But when you humble yourself under, now it's his mighty hand, not mighty against you, but mighty to bring to pass what he said in and with all of our drama. Ahasuerus was a king that when he sent for Vashti while he's drunk, while he was drunk, he sent in for Vashti and then she didn't want to come and all that mess, but she was queen and you don't just not, not obey the king. He, a whole bunch of stuff happened because of the authority that he moved in. A whole bunch of, that's how Esther got even called because the king's drunk. He sends for something to be done. And because he's king, what he says to be done is supposed to be done. We live in those times. There's heads of country and what they say, whether they're right or wrong, whether they have a right mind, a wrong mind, whatever mind it is, because of their position and their position by God. It's God who sets up kings and puts them down. And Please, body of Christ, please, body of Christ, don't make it as if that that is supposed to be that way in the sense of that that is the glory of God. That's the wonder of God in the glory of God, but it doesn't mean that it's a yes and amen for us. Sometimes it's a wake up for us. Sometimes it's judgment upon us. You don't, you wouldn't want to be so busy uh, following the king of Egypt because God set him up for just that kind of time. I'm talking about the king who was king when, when Moses came along because the king and all of his army were destroyed. And yes, it is God who set him up. God who raised him up. How about, do you think that you want to be what I call a werewolf? Yeah, Nebuchadnezzar. God set him up and he was so full of himself. God set him up. Do you want to be so busy knowing that God set him up that, that you're busy following after someone who's going to turn into, I, I say a werewolf because he said a, his hair was going to grow over him and he was going to be uh, eating, eating the, the, the grass and, and his mind, he's going to lose his mind for a while. <laughs> Just because you understand the move of God doesn't mean that it's your yes and amen. As a nation, as a people, you want to be what God says in his word, full of the knowledge of God. And you want to be making your mark in the earth as a Hazaris. And it may mean that someone like a Hazaris is going to make sure that you go down in history. Because God moves so marvelously in you. 
You see, he made a, he made a decree and signed a decree at, at someone else's, uh, uh, if, if it was our Congress, it would be as if uh, their government wasn't like ours. But if it was our government, it would be as if the Congress put it together and the president signs it and doesn't understand all of it, but he gets the gist of it. And he, you're supposed to be able to trust uh, the, the both of the houses, so you sign that thing. Now, that's not quite how it was with the Hazaris, but I'm saying the way governments work. Uh, Haman came up with something that, that everybody was supposed to be killed, and then he knows the power of his decree, and yet he watched God do something else, something powerful, and made him it made him understand that Mordecai was uh, nobody to mess with and that Mordecai's God was a God to acknowledge. And also, you make, a, you make a mark in the earth. Remember, Mordecai, I overheard somebody, a plot against the king, and he made a report about it. And it was taken care of, but he wasn't, he was, nobody gave him a star or crown or even any kind of attention. And one night when the king couldn't, couldn't uh, sleep, he's up here reading through the things, and he read what Mordecai did and realized that, hmm, I, I kind of remember that. And did anybody do anything for him? And you see God in his appointment, God in his way, and God in his timing. Haman, who had set up some really bad stuff for the Jewish people, for Esther and for Mordecai, and also because he was mad at Mordecai in particular. You see, you need to make your mark in the earth just being who you are in righteousness, even though drama's going on, even though somebody in authority doesn't like you, even though someone who can bring some, some papers against you. I'm thinking about a, a young man right now who uh, someone showed up in court and lied all on him, and he believes God, He and he knows that this shouldn't, shouldn't have gone down like that, but it did. And, it, and that's the way that that happened with Mordecai. But now the king is looking at this. And right at the time he's, he's reading this and he can't think about it, here comes Haman, and not realizing that this is a God of appointment. All that drama that's going on, God has that thing meet up just at the right time. You see, the thing that we know about Jesus in the fullness of time he came, God moves like that all the time. He moves like that all the time. He's moving like that with you. You're in this earth, on this earth, at this time, for his purposes, his glory, and his reasonings. What I want to do is encourage you to walk in it and not be afraid of it, and not lord over people when you understand that when you say a thing, it goes. That when you say a thing, that's how it is. That when you prophesy a thing, you're like Samuel, none of your words fall to the ground. And by the way, if you are like Samuel and none of your words fall to the ground, Look well to the ways of your household and your children. Because remember, Samuel was all of that. The word of God tells you he was all of that. It also tells you that his sons were sons of Belial. It tells you that his sons were terrible. And I can also sense somebody hearing this. Um, your children are wonderful. You want to bless God when your children are wonderful. God's done that with me. And so you say, oh, well, that doesn't apply to me. What I'm showing you is that when you make a mark in the earth, it doesn't mean that you can't make any mistakes. It doesn't mean that you can't get some things direly wrong. But what it does mean is that you'll make a mark in the earth and in the heavenlies. Because what does it say? Not only is Mordecai and what he wrote in the history books, the chronicles of the kings, exalted. A man's gift will make room for him and he won't stand before mean men. In other words, the insignificant. And there are people who other people think of as insignificant. But you'll stand before kings. Mordecai was one. It wasn't, it wasn't just the drama that went on that when, when Haman made it so that everybody was supposed to bow to him, Mordecai wouldn't do it. Part of why Mordecai wouldn't do it is his own personal integrity, but he also taught the children. And he knew he wasn't going to teach the children to bow to this heathen. As a matter of fact, he wouldn't teach the children to bow. Mordecai was part of the Sanhedrin. He's not going to teach the children to bow to anybody but God. But he made his mark in the earth with the children, the Sanhedrin, and with the chronicles of the kings of the Medes and the Persians, and in the heavenlies. Look at it. Pain won't stop 
Bible Bookstore, October 20th, Friday, 6.30, Ian Holmes in Concert, and he's got a new CD for you there. Make sure you bring some money to buy that at Hackman's. We want to bless Hackman's. Uni Lopez will be uh, singing Kimberly Holmes and Zuriel, three fabulous, fabulous, wonderful singers. Ian Holmes in the concert. Put it on your calendar, and when you show up, give me a hug. October 20th, Friday, that's 6.30, 6.30, I want to see you there. enough on the mark in the earth actually it's not enough there's more but now I want to show you the mark that you make in God's kingdom the mark that you make in the heavenlies the for Mordecai the Jew the last verse in Esther Esther 10 3 for Mordecai the Jew was next unto King Ahasuerus Ahasuerus pardon me and great among the Jews and accepted of the multitude of his brethren seeking the wealth of his people and speaking peace to all his seed. Now, how many things is that? He's next son to King Ahasuerus, the greatest king uh, of the day and time. Great among the Jews. And that's the leadership, not just the Jewish people. And accepted of the multitude of the brethren. You know how we have that saying, you can't please everybody? He did. And seeking the wealth of his people, not just seeking the good, but the wealth that covers all things in all areas. Like I like to talk to you about business, entrepreneurship, philanthropy, real estate, pharmaceuticals. Yeah, all of that, the wealth of his people and speaking peace to all his seed. Now this is before the Prince of Peace walked the earth and five, the number of grace. Those things are eternal the effects of them are progenic, go into progeny, into generations. Those things affect what I like to call the internal, the eternal, and the external. Or the, the internal, the external, and the eternal. So it's in the word of God, which is eternal. So he has is still yet affecting so that you can say that about you. Anything God did in somebody else, he'll do even more in you. Any battle God ever won in, in the word, you saw that he never did the same thing twice. But he did it again, and he did it again because he did it before, and he wants you to know he'll do it in you. So that you can right now, I'm not talking about affirmation. Yes, you can make it an affirmation because it's the word. But I'm talking about you can activate the word of God in you that you are next unto kings. Some of you have to deal in politics. You have to deal with the mayors and the judges and the this and the that. And that's all the people in authority. So that you are next unto kings. You're great among the Jews. Now we'll, we'll talk about the Jews and we'll talk about the Christians. But you're great among the religious leaders. You're great among the apostles and the, and the prophets and the pastors. You're great among the faith healers or whatever it is you want to put in there. That is in the word. Don't make stuff up. Just make sure it's out of the word. And accepted of the multitude of the brethren. Put your name in there. God named Mordecai. You can put your name in there. For you are, you, saint of the most high. A person called of his name. You can be next unto kings. Great among the, um, among the people. Great among the Christians. Great among the Jews. And accepted of the multitude of the brethren. Seeking the wealth of your people and speaking peace to all your seed. 
you can walk in all of that authority and make a mark in earth and in the heavenlies. Now I want to go look at, uh, I think I have it up in my phone. I want to go to Deuteronomy. I think it's Deuteronomy 23. And look at Moses. Because I, I wanted to start there, but since since um, uh, my family is musicians and producers and singers and all that, uh, I want you to see that Moses wrote a song and that song is sung in heaven. In Revelation, we find out that that song is sung in heaven. And one of the things that God spoke to me, uh, it's some years ago now, but he spoke that thing to me, that uh, there are yet people in the earth writing songs. Now, M Moses' sister, she wrote a song and it's recorded in the word. So that's making a mark in the heavenlies because she wrote, she sang her song and the scriptures tell us, I believe uh, that's, well, it's, it's um, Exodus. I was going to say 10, but that's something else there. But she sang her song as they came, as they came through the Red Sea and the ladies picked up their tambourines and they started to sing with her. So it's recorded in the eternal word of God right now. We can go read it. You don't. You may know the tune, you may not know the tune, but you can go read it. She made her mark in the earth. But what I really want to show you is that in Deuteronomy 23, we have recorded the song of Moses, and that song is sung in heaven. Now, uh, it's over in Revelation. But he that is wounded in the stones or hath... Oops, did I go to the wrong place? I think I went to the wrong place. Let me see. The Song of Moses, 32. I said 23. I went and saw the number backwards. Deuteronomy 32. Yes. For some reason or other. There we go. My uh, phone didn't even want to show me that there's a 32nd chapter. And as I told you, I've been reading the Bible uh, through every year and every quarter since 68. But give ear, O heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. See, that's why I started, wanted to start there, for you to understand that in heaven and in the earth, uh, my doctrine shall drop as the rain. There's so much going on in here, because God has let us know that who will understand doctrine? And who will he teach knowledge? He that's weaned from the breast, that's over in Isaiah. Uh, Isaiah wasn't even here yet. But that's God's, God's law, God's word, God's way. It doesn't just start because he put it in, in your mouth. But he says, my doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew. Now also know that God is showing some things. So that when you sing these things, God is revealing some things about how the earth works. So that when you need the air distilled, and, and like with all of the, the hurricane season that we've uh, had right now, and there's poison coming from this, and, and electricity not coming from that, but it's also causing other smoke and fire, you can call in rain to distill, and do to distill, and know that at a time when people might be afraid of rain because we just had all of that with the hurricanes, but you can see what needs to happen. Most of us know the, how the air feels and smells so fresh after a rain. That's not even the main point of the song. It's what I like to call the remote context. But you let God move in you and you will make a mark in the earth. And most of us at this day and time that we're living in right now and that you're listening in right now, whenever it is that you're listening to this, you are to make a mark. We're still coming after things of Tesla that he discovered, coming after things that Benjamin Franklin discovered. We're still not so much discovering them, but finding out how to move in them because they were the remote things or because they were things that needed to be in the earth. Right now, God has been showing me some things about cancer that he's already put in the earth to the medical profession, that he's already put in the earth to the prophets and to prophets of different kind. When I go through gifts administration and operations with you, I show you that heterosalos in the Greek in, in um, 1 Corinthians 12, that one of this kind, 
you know, to one and to another that's heterosalos, to one of this kind and to one of that kind. He's not going to, not talking about in the body and out of the body of Christ. He's talking about one that I've given to handle things this way and another that it comes from this way. My husband and I used to call it bookends because God was always showing us uh, uh, what I like to call the other side of a coin right now. You look at any coin. I can tell every one of you listening to pull a coin out of your purse or out of your pocket and then look at a coin. And to some of you, you see the head of a man. And 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 if I start describing a man, some of you are going, yeah, 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 that's there, that's there. And other of you are looking like, no, 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 that's not this coin, that's not this coin. Turn the coin over, the other side of the coin. And yes, I am describing the same coin. And heteros alos is like that, that... It's two different things, but all part of the same. Uh, different bookends. Uh, the, the clock that runs by the pendulum. It's no good if it doesn't hit both sides. But some of us, we're mostly on one side. You have veins and arteries. One pumps the blood in to the heart. The other takes it away from the heart. You need both. Some of you are, are good givers. But you also need to be, know how to be uh, good receivers. Because God gave the heart to pump both ways. And we just got finished doing the cheerful giver. The cheerful giver is also a reaper, a bountiful reaper. And so when you see these songs in the earth, and Moses said that he sang the song, when God gives you songs, he gives you music that's going to do things that maybe you know that music does that, and maybe you don't know that music does that. But the music is going to heal what the psychiatrists don't know how to heal it's going to bring the uh take the autism out of the autistic person it's going to cause the person who's confused of mind sometimes because of medicine and illness and modern medicine is doing the best they know but the side effects are, are doing certain things and sometimes we as believers we know that if you're a believer you shall drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt you you have that so don't accept the side effects of medicine if you're taking medicine. Some of you think that, oh, no, don't take the medicine. I'm one of those. I don't do that. But if you're a believer and you're taking the medicine, and nowadays we have all these commercials going on TV that, oh, these side effects are worse than, than the thing it's supposed to cure. Well, guess what? If you're a believer, if you drink anything, it shall not harm you. Okay? Um, but if you're not a believer, someone else is writing a song. And, and some of the wonderful things uh, are being revealed in the song or just the music goes out and it causes life. So many times my son writes this fabulous music since he was a child and uh, especially back, I think maybe it was the 80s or 90s. Uh, he was born in 76 and at two years old he was writing songs and telling his sister, sing this. He sounded like chipmunks on the on the cassette. <laughs> and... Uh, then as soon as she'd get it, he'd, he'd, he'd sing a different part. And then he'd have to tell her to sing that part that he gave her while he sings something else. And then when she could do that, then he'd go play something else on that little one and a half octave toy organ uh, that, that I had given him. And then I would play it for people and they'd get healed. I didn't know. I didn't know that, that God would do that. Now I know. Uh, you know. And some of you, you need to, you're so busy praying and confessing. Yes, do that. Uh, but music will heal. We read it in the word and, and don't want to take it as medicine right now. Remember, David played when when Saul would lose his mind for a little while. And today we'd be so busy giving him schizophrenic medicine. Well, that schizophrenic medicine can make you more schizophrenic or it can make it so that all you do is sleep. You can't live. All you can do is sleep. But let the let the one who's anointed let the psalter, let the one who who writes and sings and composes give a song and it will heal it will heal psychosis <laughs> one time we were in a in a place of uh <laughs> uh what do they call special needs i was trained in the day when they uh called it retarded and it used to irritate me so bad and and shortly after um i had the uh courses for special ed courses and I was trained that way but when I my student teaching year they still called it retarded and they gave me that class I didn't like it 
everybody in the class, by the way, when the end of the year came, they were out of that special needs class and they were indifferent. Why? Because I would put on the uh, different music that God, at those days, I didn't realize that God gave me music. That's how my son got it. But music, not just confessing the word. Yes, confess the word. Don't not do this. But make your mark in the earth knowing that you are one in 400 million. You are unique. And what God has given you is to make your mark in the earth and in the heavenlies. Job, and I'm going to give you some things that you want to say. Just like with Mordecai, whatever God said of someone else, he can say that and do that of you. That's part of why it's there. Now, most of us are so busy knowing two things about Job, and maybe a third thing. That he was sick. That his children were killed. And if you know the blessing of Job, that he was blessed double. Uh, but I want to show you some other things. I want you not to be afraid to walk out in your earth, in the earth and in the heavenlies, who you are. And I, I will warn you that um, when you you look at Job or his his miserable comforters, they were relatives. You see, your relatives will talk ugly about you, just like with with um, uh, Moses. It was his big brother and his big sister that had. Uh, something to say about the wife he married and they were busy talking about the wife and not realizing that God said you didn't know not to talk about my servant Job I mean pardon me my servant Moses you see relatives are the ones that think that they can say so much because they already know the people that think they know you the best and then the leaders are next in line but watch this uh, and I want you to be able to say this about yourself I am blessed of Eloah, and Eloah is the name of God that's used in uh, the book of Job. When you see God, it's Eloah. And that's because he made a difference in the time and among the people that he was. This is before uh, God called out Abraham or at simultaneous time. I know you go and study the chronological Bibles and they really mix you up because God has already told us how to do the timing and... Uh, we miss it most of the time uh, with our theological stuff. And I'm saying that having taken those courses and advanced courses of such. But Eloah is God of all power and might. He's God of time, seasons, and order. And he's the God who is ever with us, the God of strength, the creator, the God who is true. That's who Eloah is. So that you can say that I'm blessed. I am blessed of Eloah. Okay. And Job 29.3, you can say this, and it's not just an affirmation. This is the word of God. You can bear witness with the word of God. That I'm blessed of Eloah, that my candle shines upon my head. You see, this we, we know it from Jesus that we're lights of the earth. And Jesus said nobody, you know, you don't put your, your light under a, a bushel, your candle under a bushel. This 
way before Jesus said it, part of why we should have recognized everything that he said. And if you're walking the word, if you're looking for him, then when he speaks a thing, you recognize. Somebody needs to know that's where I get that from. I won't take the time to say that now. Okay, so I'm blessed of Eloah that his candle shines upon my head and by his light, I walk through darkness. That's Job 29.3. You need to know how to walk through the darkness of times. Some of you know that from the fasting chapter, Isaiah 58, he lets you know that when you fast after the fast that he's chosen, that your darkest time is going to be like the noonday. So in this hurricane season, you need to speak the word so that you can get through these things and then bring other people through. I am grateful that from the days of my youth, the secret of, of Eloah, the secret of God is upon my tabernacle, upon my house. That means kind of like what Joshua later on said that as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. You know, that's at a time when some people are doing one thing and some people are doing another thing. There's a whole lot. There's always a plethora of things going on. There's always history going on. People are doing, you are unique, one in 400 million. But remember, the other 400 million are out there doing all kinds of stuff. I am living in honor and triumph in that should die. The Almighty is ever with me and my children yet about me. That's Job 29, 5. That you can say that from. Some of the things that you don't want to you don't want to be afraid to walk in, to make your mark in the earth and in the heavenlies. I am one whom Eloah has given to retain esteem and honor. That when I go out and come in, the nobles hold their peace. Their tongue cleaves to the roof of their mouth. When the ears hear me, then it blesses me. And when the eyes see me, it gives witness to me. This is Job's testimony in 2911. It can be your testimony right now, especially since most of you have given your life to Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Some of you need to recognize you're, you're Jewish and you need to recognize that Jesus is the Messiah and give him lordship. And others of you, you just right now need to say, Jesus, I, I give you my life. Forgive me of my sin. I believe that you, you walked this earth, fully God, fully man, that you died on the cross for my sin. Wash me, cleanse me. I believe that you rose on the third day and that you're coming back again. I just heard that made, I made a rhyme there. But uh, you walk that, and this is what God has given you. And some of you in politics, you need to understand, you don't need to do the tricks. I hear me rhyming again. You don't need to do the tricks. That's all up there in the politics. But what you need to know, like Job in, a, in a Job 29, 11, that you are one whom God has given to retain esteem. That people honor you and they don't even know why. They don't know who you are or where you came from. And some of them think they do, like his relatives his three comforters, they think they thought they knew him. And they were saying all kinds of things about him. Yeah, they'll say all kinds of things about you and they won't be right either, even though they're so sure of what they're saying. But they retain, but you, Job, he says, I retain esteem and honor. And when I go out and come in, the nobles, the people who write decrees, the people who influence other people, they hold their peace. Stop talking a bunch of nonsense. Stop being influenced by nonsense. They hold their peace. Just your presence of because of who God has given you to be in the earth causes people who other people are supposed to listen to, whether it's in music, in politics, whether no matter where it is, that God has given people to listen to you. That's an, that's an anointing that people listen to you. And you want to walk in it to the glory of God, of Eloah. But he says that they hold their tongue. They hold their peace, pardon me. And their tongue cleaves to the roof of their mouth. So that if it's not exalting God, and if it's not blessing you, they can't just continue in what they're saying. That's, that's what's going on in Job 29, 11. And when the ear hears me, just like uh, James, when, when the apostles came together and they all 
uh, gave witness to, to how Cornelius and his house came to the Lord. But when James said something and he recounted, then it was settled. I, I love the way it says in, in uh, the Amplified Bible, it was settled with finality. That's your, that's your New Testament. It was already here in Job that God does this. Eloah does this. And he does this through men. He does this through you. Many of you who are hearing me right now, that's what he gives you. That when you speak up, people hear you and it settles the mess. It settles the argument. You're not to argue, but when you say a thing, it settles all the issues. And that's whether people agree or don't agree. Because as we go on in the scripture, in the New Testament, we find that there were still some that they just didn't like it that way and they would still go on. But for the church, that thing was settled. When James spoke, it was settled. And here Job is saying this, that when the ear hears me, then it blesses me. And when, when the <coughs> eye sees me, it gives witness to me. Now, I know if you go and say that to your church leaders, to your apostle, to your prophet, they're going to say, what happened to you? You're proud? This is Job twenty nine eleven. He's speaking the word. God gave us witness of the word to know that there are people in the earth that have that kind of effect. You're supposed to. Some of us are old enough to remember the day when nobody would smoke in front of a church. Nobody would cuss in front of a synagogue. And, and now we have all this cussing on ads. We need to walk in who we are in the earth. And in the heavenlies, some of you don't understand that the light that you have, when you speak the word of God, those angels of light in the authority that they have to move in through the heavenlies and through time, faster than any plane and more effective than any airplane that you can catch, they can land it on the other side of the planet and activate the word of God that you spoke in light out of your mouth. And this is why Jesus said that if you have the faith of God, I shared that with you before, that if you look in the Greek, it's not faith in God, it's the faith of God. You'll say, you'll say, you'll say a thing. And specifically saying it to a mountain, these are things of nature, things that God created to stand. But it's Eloah, remember? Eloah, he is the God of all power and might, the God of seasons and time, the God of order the God of strength, the creator, the God who is true. You can speak even as he, and it has the effect. So that when he spoke and he said a thing, he looked at it and said, that's good. That's good. He said, light be, and light was. That's good. And I want to remind you, if you have sickness in your body, or sickness about your body, or sickness in your family, or in your home, when he made man, he said, very good. So you touch your body and you say conform to the word of God. When he made man, he said, very good. Every system, very good. Every function, very good. I talk to this body, moving parts move because God said so. Arthur can't live here. Burke can't live here. And and Mr. Meyer, you know, uh, what, what do they call it? Um. Alzheimer's, Myers, or whatever. None of them. They can't live here. This is my house. When God made it, he said, very good. Speak to your body. Speak to the physiology of your surroundings, of your tabernacle. Job 29, 12, he says, I, 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 you make it your confession. I'm completely blessed to be one whom Eloah has given to retain riches. I used to wonder why years ago that riches flowed through me all the time. I mean, and here he says, retain riches and honor because, now watch this, I deliver the poor. Some of you know the scripture where God said that he that gives to the poor lends to the Lord and that he will repay. And and you know that this a scripture also says that, that the, the borrower is servant to the lender. And God will repay. He's not going to be serv subservient or servant to you. And he says, because I, deliver, because I deliver the poor that cry and the fatherless and him that hath, hath none to help him. 
And by the way, to help him doesn't mean just send money. <laughs> it means whatever the help is that needs it. That means that like Proverbs 8, God gives with wisdom. He gives the witty inventions. He gives how to do a thing, not just send money. Some of some. Yeah, you're, all you're ever going to do is send money. And others, you're going to send money to this place. And you're going to send money to that place. You're going to send money to this place because they have uh, supplies that help with electrical things. You're going to send money to that place because they uh, have supply for scholarly things, school books. You have money for this place because they get businesses going. You see, you are one who's blessed with riches and honor and wealth. But he tells you because... Because I deliver the poor. That's not just send money. That's help. I, that means I bring them out. That's messianic walk to make your mark in the earth and in the heavenlies. You are blessed and anointed of God. You are ablaze with the glory of God. God has blessed the work of your hands and you walk in favor with God and man. You think from the word and you make wise moves. You are blessed and excel in all that you do. You always attract people of wisdom and an excellent spirit and you engage in transactions and situations of vast, excellent and lasting merit. You are occupied with people and endeavors on a plane of timely, immediate, high and positive return in the internal, the external and the eternal realm, in the temporal, the celestial, the natural, the spiritual, in the personal, interpersonal, community, national and global. You move in all that pertains to life and godliness according to the promises of God in all of their fullness. You are continuously and profoundly supplied in time, resources, wisdom, and health, in favor and finance, and all manner of wealth, in revelation and vision of things present and things to come, in the knowledge and understanding and zeal of the Holy One. You are called to His glory, His virtue, and His praise. You are elected to His power, His loving kindness, and His grace. You are clothed with humility, and you are prudent in matters. You are blessed in anointed, highly favored, and appointed, and you are full of the word of God and its demonstration. God has appointed your going out and your coming in. He has ordained that your very life exemplify him. Righteousness, justice, and holiness unto the Lord is the mark of your call, and the resurrection power and the glory of God, you will fulfill all. You are blessed and anointed of God. You are ablaze with the glory of God. Thank you.